for theme park food. I can't get enough of it. So I figured it was finally time to fulfill my childhood dreams of being a TV chef. I'll show you how to bring the magic of the theme parks into your own kitchen. Some recipes may turn out great, some may not, but hey, we'll have fun along the way. Welcome to another episode of Food Rocks, where today I am going to be recreating a very, 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 very good food. <laughs> One of my favorite snacks of all time at the Disney parks. It is the sweet cream cheese. Okay, it's called sweet cream cheese pretzel. I keep wanting to just say sweet cream pretzel, but I think we have to like distinguish that it is made with cream cheese. Anyway, I made that, the sweet cream cheese pretzel. Ta-da, I'm gonna put it right here. Not Mickey shaped. I don't know why I thought I needed to even attempt to make a Mickey shaped sweet cream cheese pretzel, but it's not. It's a little fatter, which now, after making this recipe makes sense because having to fill it, it's hard to keep it cylindrical. It's like fatter and like wider and thicker. So I should have learned my lesson. Actually, I should have just looked at a picture before I made it, but whatever. This is for your entertainment, not mine. I have never made a pretzel before in my life, but I know that you make a dough, you dip it in a baking soda, boiling water situation, and then you just let it bake, and then it has that like nice little pretzel crust. It's supposed to be like chewy, really, really chewy, but kind of has that little bite to it when you bite into it. So um, not only was I making a pretzel for the very first time, but I'm also making a stuffed pretzel for the very first time. Um, was very difficult and we will see it together um, and you hopefully will be enthused and amused at how I um, attempted to create this pretzel. I had a great time, I think. You know what? It was a good gag. I had a great laugh and who doesn't love to laugh? And with that, let's go to the kitchen and see how we're making this pretzel. All right, so what you are seeing now is um, me putting water, warm water, make sure it's very warm, and then a tablespoon of salt and sugar, and then a full packet of uh, yeast. Now the yeast needs that warm water to be activated. Um, behind the scenes, this is actually the first one, the water is too cold. So I had to make a second one, didn't film it. I was just like, oh, people will think that this is <laughs> this is correct, but make sure your water is warm. When you put in the yeast, it'll bubble up. And when the bubbles double in about five minutes, that means your yeast is alive and that your dough will also be alive. So now that you have your yeast, look, you can even see the small bubbles. Um, this is when you put flour. Let me check my notes, how much flour you put. I wanna say it's like four cups. It's a lot of flour, four and a half cups of flour, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just gonna mash it. I started using a wooden spoon and it just wasn't working, so I just used my hands. If you have a KitchenAid, go ahead and just use that with your dough hook as well. And then you're gonna add two tablespoons of oil to this dough. You're gonna swirl the bowl with one tablespoon of oil, and then you're gonna put the dough back in that bowl Cover it up and you're gonna let that rise for an hour. Now, you know Miss Thing was nervous that that dough was not going to rise. I'm gonna make my cream cheese filling while the dough is rising. So that's just eight ounces of softened cream cheese. Just leave your cream cheese block at like room temperature. It'll soften up. And then I used about half a cup of powdered sugar. Um, if you want it sweeter, go ahead and add more. And then just keep whisking it until it's nice and soft. Just like so, there you go. Make sure it's the right color as well, so make sure you swash it on your hand first, and if it looks good, then you're all set. So now I'm going to make the breadcrumb topping. Um, so this is literally just fresh bread, or in my case, refrigerated stale bread. Cut it into those small bits and then put it in your little food processor until um, you get like nice fine breadcrumbs. So after I chug my rosé here, 
There's a little Friedrich. That's my dog Friedrich. He has a little nub for a tail. Um, you will see that your rise will occur. You should have a, a risen dough. It should be double. Mine was not double. You're gonna cut this dough into eight even pieces and then you're gonna start stretching them. So when you're rolling like I am, make sure you kind of press down as you roll and stretch it out like that so that you do get that nice thin rope of pretzel dough. So yeah, put that cream cheese filling into like a piping bag or even just like a Ziploc bag, just cut the tip off. And then you're just going to pipe a thin string right in the middle. Now. This is already where you can make this better than I did. I did not roll out my pretzel as flat and as wide as I could have. Now watch me struggle, try to like cover this cream cheese pretzel. Like um, that, that cream cheese is not, it's not like the two ends of the dough was just not connecting. It just wasn't working. Um, I'm having a nervous breakdown <laughs> like this. So I got a little knife to kind of help like push the dough in. Um, I would say just, just to make it easy, just like roll it flatter and then maybe just like fold it in half like a book. Just like fold it like that. Because I mean, the original pretzel wasn't even like a cylindrical thing. So yeah. Now that you've sealed your um, pretzel, this is me trying to <laughs> create the shape. Okay, sis, I have not had a pretzel in a really long time and I did not realize that you could connect those two loose ends. I thought it was just supposed to like hang off in the middle like that. If I had let it connect and rest on the rest of the pretzel, it would have been so much easier to cook, but I'm a dum dum. Okay, this is what makes a pretzel a pretzel. You are going to put half a cup of baking soda. Nope, two thirds cup of baking soda to about a pot of boiling water. Once you see it pop and bubble and boil, dip in your pretzel and you really just give it that little like basty bath, poachy bath for about 30 seconds. Doesn't take that long. You are about to see that this did not work as easily as the first one. Ugh. Are you ready? It's so embarrassing. I am embarrassed. It ended up looking kind of like the upper digestive tract, you know, like a like a colon. Large intestines is kind of what it ended up looking like. Um, so you're gonna do an egg wash. That's just a beaten egg. I did not have a pasty brush. This is the this is the circus. You're about to see the circus right now. So I'm flattening out, I'm just doing the cream cheese on the like head shape. Not even attempting the ears, not even attempting the eyes or the mouth. No ma'am. So already off to a bad start, right? Because I can't even crimp them close. <laughs> what I did to him was not nice. It is a disservice. Okay, so I was trying to make the whole thing with just one realized that was not gonna happen. So I made just this ring for the head shape and then do semicircles for the ears and then fill in his face. I just did two. <laughs> and the eyes on the top. Top lip? Like, I don't even know. I guess that's the like, do I have a Mickey? I guess it's the like top shape. I don't know, sis. This is, I, you guys, this is comedy at its finest. I am about to attempt to poach this oversized Mickey pretzel that I've made. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah, Mickey! Mickey! Oh my God. I had just like butchered Mickey Mouse's face. And here's the best part. Is that his face just like fills up the bowl. <laughs> just like, just like a Viking funeral gone bad. Like the face just like appears. Ew! This is the 
worst part. So my intern, Jessie, was trying to pull the rest of the pretzel out and she like did it once and it was like, I can't do this. I don't know what I'm doing. So there she is, there's Mickey Mouse. Oh. oh my God, so bad. I feel so bad for him. But look at how, <laughs> look at how brown they've turned out. That's what I was saying, like, Without the cream cheese, without the stuffing, I could give, like, I don't need to make that anymore. I can just make normal pretzels because look how nicely brown they came out. So they were cracking. You can kind of see the cream cheese stuffing kind of like oozing out just because it really didn't make that connection. So it kind of just made like a Danish. <laughs> So I just put melted butter on top of these pretzels and then put the um, breadcrumbs that we created earlier um, as a topping. And here's Mickey Mouse. <laughs> so bad. Okay, so this one was really nice. I liked the shape of that. This kind of looked like a like Slytherin, like it looked like a snake. That one I was trying to make Mickey ears by just like looping it and then connecting it. Didn't turn out well. It, it's a little uteral. <laughs> and then this one is not stuffed. And I really like that. That was probably my favorite pretzel out of all of them. And then these, I, I was getting so tired of making ropes that I was like, I'm just gonna make a long john. And there's Mickey Mouse herself. And these are the two doggies, Luna and Friedrich, who did absolutely no help. This has been the most stressful recipe that I've ever created. I'm never doing this again, but I will do pretzels. Because I really liked how they came out just as a pretzel situation and not as a Food Rocks recreation of a Disney pretzel. So here it is. <laughs> I should submit this for Nailed It. Okay, it doesn't matter what it looks like as long as it tastes good. So let's slice right in. Look at that. Not, didn't even make the center. <laughs> this is so bad. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Listen, it's a good pretzel. Nice and salty on the outside with the crust. Chewy. Not as crispy. Could be crispier. And there is a little bit of that cream cheese that stays. Why am I talking with my mouthful? It's not bad, you guys. It's not bad. It looks ugly, but it's not bad. And isn't that the lesson that we're trying to teach our children today? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Never judge a book by its cover. And never judge a pretzel by its uh, cracks or whatever. Here's the leader of the band. Oh my God. <laughs> Why does it look the way it looks? Do you see it? Oh my God. Those are his eyes. I'm it's horrified. Like me. <laughs> Girl, that's... <laughs> it's a Casey pretzel. <laughs> I don't taste cheese at all. <laughs> There's no cheese. Yes, it is. That's right there. God, it's there. <laughs> M-I-C-K-E-Y M-O-U-S-E <laughs> Thanks for watching another episode of Food Rocks. You can find us on Instagram at RJ Food Rocks. That's all I have right now, <laughs> the Instagram and the YouTube. So like this video down below, write a little comment, just say pretzel. At the very base level, you can just say pretzel smiley face. Um, but if you really loved what you saw, you know, give me a little shout out, write a little comment, um, or you can write down saying, that was absolutely hilarious. I love this vaudevillian cooking uh, that you are doing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week for another video. Bye.